Delaney, congratulations on making Team USA. How did you originally get involved in diving? Um, well, I was a gymnast for a while before, so um, I, I got a little burnt out because I went to the B camps, um, like the training cam camps at uh, Bella Curly Ranch. Um, but my sister and brother would swim at the Arizona pool and I saw one of my old gymnastics teammates there. So I was like, hmm, like I, I went to go talk to her and just, she was one of the older girls that I looked up to in gymnastics. So I, you know, went to talk to her and she just kind of told me, you know, like I, I told her I was burnt out and she was like, yeah, like you should give diving a try. And so before that, I wasn't really interested. I thought I looked too scary. <laughs> So I wasn't going to try diving. Um, but after she talked to me, I was like, okay, like I look up to her, I probably should listen. So I, uh, next day tried diving, um, and it was like instantly fell in love with it. How has your gymnastics background built that foundation to help you just transition so smoothly into diving? It definitely helps like from the body, like air awareness aspect. Um, when you start flipping at a young age, that definitely helps, um, whether that be in diving or gymnastics. Um, I think the one really tricky part was landing on your head because obviously in gymnastics, you're taught not to do that. And so I had a hard time learning how to, how to land on my head for a little while. And, but once, once I figured that out and once that clicked and some of the technical things were a little different, but once all that clicked, it really was second nature. Delaney, take us back to that first dive that you ever did off the platform. What were your emotions and what was that like? I remember my coach told me to take like a sitting lineup up to 10 meter for the first time. And I was like, no way, absolutely not. Like basically refused to do it. But then like me and the way, the way I am, I was like, okay, like I should probably listen. So like towards the end of the practice, um, I went up to him and I was like, can I do it? Because I decided, I guess, at the end of the practice to take it up to 10 meter. And so I did it that day. Um, and honestly, it was, I didn't think it was too scary. Um, I don't really remember really much, learning all my other dives after that, to be honest. It was pretty much a blur. Like, we, we moved pretty quick after that. Um, so, yeah, I had 10 meter voluntaries within a year after that and um, learned my first optional when I was about 13, 14. I don't know about you, but the 10 meter voluntaries were always the scariest for me. <laughs> there, I, I agree. I totally agree. And they hurt more. <laughs> they hurt more. They do. You really got to lock in and, and get that rip when, when you're doing all those flips and the twists, you just line it up real quick. So very interesting. Um, Delaney, I'm, I'm originally from New Jersey, so I, I grew up diving inside but I do college at USC, Southern Cal, outside, very familiar with the Arizona pool and all the Pac-12 pools. Um, I want you to tell all of us the difference diving indoors versus diving outdoors. Yeah, I mean, you definitely have a lot more elements to deal with, um, but I think it honestly is a pretty big advantage when you go from an outdoor pool to an indoor pool or even when you have a competition outdoors. Um, Tucson has a lot of wind, so <laughs> we get like big gusts of wind and that can be really tricky. Um, the sun can be a tricky thing to deal with, especially when it comes to spotting. Um, you know, the position of the sun can matter, like at our pool, the way our pool is facing changes the way the sun like goes over our pool. And sometimes the water has like a glare to it. <laughs> so it can be kind of tricky to like see where the water is sometimes, but, um, you know, like I, I love diving outside just because I think it gives you a little bit of like um, confidence going into an indoor pool because you don't have to deal with all that stuff that you train under. How do you cope with some of those outside elements, right? Maybe a little bit of rain, maybe a little bit of wind, maybe sunscreen, right? You got to wear that sunscreen. How do you deal with all these outside elements? I don't love wind. I think that's the hardest thing to deal with is wind because that can like mess with the way you're standing and definitely get inside your head more than anything. Um, but for me, you just have to try and say it's not there. <laughs> like you just, okay, there's no wind. It's the same thing as diving indoors and just like trust that you know what you're doing. And yeah, there are days where the wind gets really bad and I genuinely get pretty scared. <laughs> um, but I think just learning to like 
pretend it's not there. That's typically what I try to do. Delaney, a lot of advantages from training outdoors. I was talking to Jess last week and we were discussing, you're going to have a nice tan, right? You can work on that tan while also diving. Yeah. So you'll have a nice glow heading into Tokyo. Yeah, I'm not someone who tans very easy, <laughs> which is unfortunate because I do have such an amazing outdoor pool to dive in. And, you know, everybody always asks me, why are you not more tan? I'm like, I don't know. I try really hard. Um, <laughs> so hopefully I'm a little more tan this time around. We'll see. But she's probably going to pass me in two days. Delaney, take me through your emotions when you first found out you were on Team USA and you are an Olympian. As much as we don't like to look at the scoreboard, me and Jess both kind of like knew that we were in a position to make the team. And I remember thinking, okay, like Jess has been in this situation before, like I'm gonna lean on her. And so like, I pretty much made it very vocal to her going into our last dive, like, okay, like we're about to make the team. Like, I need to like figure out how to calm down. <laughs> like, I need to make sure that I just land on my head. <laughs> and she was like helping me with like, you know, like you got it, you're good. You know what you're doing. And um, I remember we hit the water and I like, it was like, she said too, like, it was just kind of like a, you know, like a moment where you're like, ah, oh, like we finally did it. Um, and I came up and I remember looking at Jess and just like, you know, kind of following her lead because she's been through it before and I, I was like you know like looking at her like what do we do like did we make it I don't know because we couldn't really see the scoreboard from there um and I saw her kind of like get emotional and I I remember I I looked at her and I got pretty emotional and yeah it was it was very surreal it all happened very very fast <laughs> I'm so glad you brought up Jess because diving yes it is an individual sport but when you're doing synchro it's very much so a team mm -hmm. aspect. What makes you and Jess such a great pair? I think what's really important is that not only do you fit together as like, like in terms of diving technique, but also like you get along person, like personality wise. And I think Jess and I both compete very similar. We're both very um, like-minded in terms of like goals and like what we want and our like ability to work towards those goals. Um, we're both very driven. And I think we also just get along very well outside the pool. And I think that helps a lot because when we are in the pool and you know I'm having rough practice or she's having rough practice, it's really easy for us to like understand what's going on inside of each other's heads and like help each other get out of that and just kind of work as a team. And I think you know, we, we love to have fun up on 10 meter too. And I think that's definitely a big plus. We want to learn a little bit more about you guys as a pair. What do you like to do to have fun on 10 meter and also off the pool deck when you guys have time and you get to spend a little time together, what do you and Jess do? Me and Jess are both huge tea drinkers. <laughs> so like I literally have my tea right here. Oh um, what kind? <laughs> mint. I'm a big mint tea fan, but, um, we always, we bond over that. I feel like, <laughs> like we were talking about getting an electric kettle for, um, <laughs> for Japan and, you know, hopefully they'll have one there, but, um, I don't know, like we, we just like to like crack jokes here and there. And, um, we like to watch Netflix shows and we like talk about those. And I think it's really good that we can laugh at practice and even laugh right before we do our 10 meter dives and then just immediately be like, okay, we got to focus now. <laughs> can't take it too seriously up there, right? No. <laughs> Delaney, like you said earlier, Jess has been here before, right? She is an Olympian. How have you, I guess, leaned on her as a mentor? I know she's your friend and she's your senior partner, but as a mentor, what have you uh, learned from her? Um, not a lot yet, just because we haven't really gotten in that environment to where like I need to like, you know, figure something out or what you know what I mean like but um I've I've asked a lot about like what to pack because I don't I have no idea what to pack um I've asked a lot about like like at trials I was definitely leaning on her a lot in that synchro event because she has done it before um and I know like she's done two events at the Olympic Games before and I've never competed in two events internationally before I've always only done individual so um, I'm definitely going to lean on her for that too and ask for advice in in that sense just because 
I know that will be different for me. So I'm going to try and go in there um, knowing what to expect. So you mentioned what to pack. What does she tell you? What, <laughs> what's in your suitcase, Delaney? <laughs> um, nothing yet. Um, I'm also moving. So that's kind of tricky as I have to like get everything moved and also like everything packed. But um, she's pretty much telling me don't pack like anything. So I'm like having a hard time understanding like, okay, like what does that mean? You know, I don't know. But like she just said, don't really pack a lot of clothes. You'll get plenty of that. Um, just pack like your necessities and you should be, you should be good. Put all those tea bags in there, right? <laughs> You've yep, got all the tea will, that you like. <laughs> yep, the tea will definitely be in there. <laughs> I was talking to Jordan Wendell last week too. And I said, what are you most excited for? And he said, Natalie, I'm excited for the swag. Like all <laughs> the stuff we get is awesome. So I'm sure yeah. you have a lot of, of uh, Team USA swag waiting for you. I'm very excited about that. It's going to be really, really fun. <laughs> Delaney, you talked about your reaction and Jess's reaction when you found out you made the Olympic team. What was your family's reaction? My family, I'm, I'm similar to Jess in this way. I didn't want my family to be like too crazy in the stands. <laughs> um, but they, I mean, they know how, how, how hard it's been to get here and they, they've seen me struggle. They've seen like, you know, the tears and the, the days where I'm like injured and, you know, like struggling and yeah. So they, they've seen it all and having them there to support me was, unbelievable just because you know they've seen it they've seen that what happens behind the scenes um but they I remember walking out from the pool after like all the testing and stuff because this time around we couldn't you know go on the stands and give them hugs and stuff so that was kind of hard just like being on the pool deck and you know all I could do is wave at them and you know blow them kisses and stuff but um when I was able to walk outside and go see them they were so excited and yeah, their support has been unbelievable. It takes a village. And I, I know you know that. What have they done to support you behind the scenes? Yeah, I mean, it's really on those days where diving gets really hard or, you know, things aren't always going how they should be going and not aren't going as planned. Um, and, you know, my boy, boyfriend has been my rock for the past four years. He's seen it all with me you know the <laughs> freak outs the you know the tears the everything so I mean like he's been a great person for me to like lean on and um yeah they they just been been my rock when I needed them and that's been very very special that's awesome yeah Delaney I know this this past year has been unlike any other right COVID-19 unprecedented times, you know, having to stop your training abruptly and all of a sudden, how were you able to stay sharp and rise above it? Yeah, I think COVID definitely, it, it sucked because I felt very ready back in 2020. I, I never felt more ready. And um, it was hard knowing that I had to be out of the pool for that long. And there were a few times where we thought we were going to be able to get back in the pool and they would say, nope, we actually can't. And so like, those were some really hard, hard days just because like you start getting really excited. And then all of a sudden it's like, man, like you can't get back in the pool. So I think it was just, it was really important to learn to roll with the punches um, in the, that time because everything was so unpredictable. Um, but I was very fortunate to have a gymnastics gym to go train in. Um, with my old gymnastics coaches because they had no one in there and they were like okay well you can come in and just you do your flips and do whatever you need to do in the in the gym um, so I had access to some mats and stuff so that that helped a lot um, and then eventually there was a pool in Phoenix that opened up so I was able to go up there and train um, but you know I definitely don't feel like I was as ready this time around but you know I don't think anyone really was it was because it has been a year with limited competition um but yeah I think really it was a matter of like staying mentally tough and being able to roll with the punches I think that made a big difference I'm glad you mentioned that because you know it's a glass half full right some athletes could have been ready a year ago and maybe some are like I'm really glad I had that extra year I feel more prepared Right. So that's very interesting that you felt more ready a year ago, but here you are, right? It didn't, it didn't yeah. make a difference for you. you yeah, I mean, did. yeah, I try not to let it get in my head just because, you know, like, you know, we're here. 
it, it's happening anyway. So we can't, you know, let ourselves get in a spot where we start getting in our heads because one way or another it's happening. And it's like, you've got to be sure that you do what you can to be ready when you need to be. Delaney, take us through right now where you're at, both mentally and physically heading into the games here in a few weeks. Yeah. I mean, I feel good. I feel ready. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, it's definitely been hard to get some of the excitement out. Um, <laughs> but now that we're back up on 10 meter, um, training pretty heavy up there. Um, you know, it's starting to feel more like I'm preparing for a competition. And I, I think it's finally like kind of clicked like, okay, like we're going to the games. That's, that's great. But like, we've got to make sure that we go and put our best foot forward. It's just another me, right? Right. <laughs> Take me through trials. How did you uh, treat trials as a stepping stone? It's definitely, it was good to compete before the Olympic games. Um, yeah, cause this year has been pretty limited in competition. Um, but really like, I think the most important thing for me was working on my competitive mentality. Um, cause I had NC2As a month before and that didn't go how I had hoped. And I think that was honestly a blessing in disguise because like it kind of made me sit back and like think, okay, what went wrong and what can I do different at trials? And so I think it was good to be able to try to implement some of the things that I learned from that NC two ways and um, figure out what works for me and what doesn't. And I think going into the games, I'm definitely going to try and do, do, do the same thing because I think, like I, I started off prelim individual with a not so great first dive, not so great first list. Um, and typically when that happens, I get inside my head and I didn't let that happen here. And I need to figure out how I did that again. So um, we're gonna definitely try and mimic that going into trials. I'm glad you mentioned individual because it's two jobs when you have individual and synchro to focus on. How do you balance both? What's nice is most of the dives are the same. It really just adds two voluntaries. Um, but I mean, I'm obviously synchros first, so I want to make sure that I'm fully prepared for synchro. Um, and we'll, you know, like when we're training, I'll just throw in my, my individual 10 meter dives um, while we're training and make sure that I'm still working on those, but also focusing on synchro because I think synchro does help individual. Um, you know, Jess has an amazing front start and it helps my front start and she has an amazing back twist start. So it helps me and she has really great come out. So being able to like watch our dives together um, helps me dive better individually. So I think it'll be really great to do synchro first and then like be able to try to implement those things individually too. I love that you mentioned synchro helping your individual diving because I felt the same way, right? When you're with a partner that maybe has different strengths than you, you can watch them, learn from them, and they kind of push you. Right. Yeah, exactly. Delaney, USA Diving has a campaign, Champions Forged into Water. Can you just talk about how diving has impacted your life in every area? It's impacted me like it's basically made my entire life. Like it is my entire life. Um, I mean, without diving, I wouldn't have been able to go to college. I wouldn't have been able to go to grad school. Like there's so many things that I would not have been able to do that I am very grateful for and that that diving has given me. Um, and it's really taught me how to be a better person, not only inside the pool, but outside the pool. Like I've learned how to deal with, um, how to deal with stress, how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with like the emotional punches that come with um, competing and the stress of competing. And, you know, it's similar to like taking those things and using them in a test in school. So um, yeah, I've, I've really just learned a lot of lessons that I think are going to be very useful in my life. Um, like time management is another thing. I, you know, when I take a break from diving, I'm actually worse with my time, time management because I have so much time on my hands that I just like feel like I can do it whenever I want. <laughs> um, but when I'm diving, it's like, you know, you have to have a set schedule. You have to do, do what you need to do in your breaks. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of great things that I have learned from diving and I'm going to carry with me through life and through my career. So glad you mentioned grad school because that is a whole nother ball game. How have you been able to excel not only on the boards, but in school and beyond that? 
I think school in a way is a good um, distraction from diving too. It's not just, you know, another thing. It's like, it's a good way to kind of like think about something else um, just because, you know, you don't want to be 100% diving. That's the only thing that matters. Um, you want to make sure that you have other things to focus on. And for me, I think school is a good thing for me. I think it helps me um, forget about some things, you know, like if I had a bra bad practice and I can, you know, I have a class I have to go to, then I can go focus on that. Um, but yeah, it, it can be really tough, just especially when you, when I'm going into grad school, I'm going to have a really heavy course load. Um, and eventually I'm going to be working in clinicals. And so I'm going to have to manage like training and working in clinicals. And so I know it's going to be tough, but I think I'm fully prepared to, to handle it. Working in clinicals. I mean, that brings me to my next question. What, what's next for you? I know sky's the limit in anything you want to do. You can accomplish anything. Uh, what are your future goals, Delaney? So I'm going into the speech language pathology program. Um, and so I really want to work um, with autism and speech or something in like uh, ch children's speech disorders or like swallowing feeding disorders. Um, so I'm not really sure 100% yet what I want to do um, with my speech degree, but um, I'm really excited just because I've taken a few courses already and I've absolutely loved them. I think it's really, really interesting. And I honestly love logging into my classes and learning about that stuff. And I've, I've had a great time already and it's only been two classes. So I'm really looking forward to my future in the career. What inspired you to want to get into that field? A few things. Um, I originally wanted to do occupational therapy, but COVID, that was actually a good, th good thing that came out of COVID is because I was originally going to do that. But then when I got that extra year, I was like, okay, well now I have two, two more years here. So I'm going to try and find a grad program offered at U of A. And I honestly don't know why I never looked into speech before, because it's very similar and we actually work with OTs. Um, and the program here is like top six in the nation and I had no idea and so I was like wow like this was literally it fell into my lap <laughs> so I started applying and I got in and um you know like I in my letter I wrote about a kid that we work with um I won't name his name just for HIPAA reasons but um we work with a kid in Team Impact and um, he has a little bit of struggle with his speech and it it's hard to watch sometimes because you know like he really wants to like get his point across and sometimes he just can't and it's it's hard to see that and it's like that kind of inspired me to be like okay like I want to be able to help kids like him be able to communicate and talk with people and be able to to communicate. Some similarities with diving right trying to learn that dive and trying to learn that dive and then once you execute that dive it just it feels so good. Right. Yeah. It's very similar in that way. Yeah. Delaney, I know I've asked this before, but you were an Olympian. What does it mean to be representing Team USA in Tokyo? I've represented my country since I was 12. And so being able to do it at that top level is, it, it is a dream come true. I mean, like there's no other way to really say it just because, you know, you are wearing the red, white, and blue on the stage that every athlete wants to get to. And to be able to say that I've done that, like that's honestly unbelievable. Like I still, it's still not real and I don't think it will feel real till I'm there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a huge honor. Delaney, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck. And again, congratulations, take it all in. <laughs> I will for sure.